sweet intro. Hey, my, my name is Katrina Eisman. Anyway, I'm, I'm actually sincerely very impressed by this whole event um, and by the enthusiasm. I want to talk today about size does not matter, OK? Um, and, and to show you a number of uh, images and give you some ideas, et cetera, on what we can all use to take pictures, take better pictures. So I came up with this uh, whole idea of uh, small, medium, large. I want to share some uh, new ideas with you. All right? So what are some of the advantages of the small cameras? And by small, I know I'm holding up an iPhone Pro, which is like bigger than most cameras. It's sort of silly. So there's the Sony, and you can fit like two iPhones in front of it. But I'm uh, representing the smaller cameras primarily with iPhone and some new ideas. So the biggest advantage of the phone is exactly. You leave the house, oh, I forgot my phone, you go back. You leave the house, you forgot your camera, or you're like, yeah, yeah, I won't see anything. And there's, there's literally, there's two things that bore me to death when people talk. Describing the photo they missed <laughs> and their dreams, you know? Um, so we're trying to get the phone into the head for the dreams. But of course, that you always have it with you, all right? And it doesn't really matter the weather. Um, you know, while I'm commuting, I can always practice with the phone, et cetera. I can always practice while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting at the post office. <laughs> Took a lot of pictures that day. Okay. While I'm uh, waiting for juice. Little, I love the innuendo of this picture, all right? Uh, or well, I guess while I'm waiting for lunch. You know, I say I made a little condiment traffic light. Um, and that's what I love about photography is I see the world more clearly through a viewfinder. I love to experiment, explore. Or here, I'm lucky, this is what I photograph while I was waiting for an elevator. All right? And because I had the iPhone with me, I can always practice, practice composition, experimentation, etc. No excuses. Because an important part of photography is the craft involved. And we do need to practice. All right? One thing I really love about working with the iPhones and these smaller cameras is the ability to expand them with apps. All right? To, one of my favorite apps is to experiment with slow shutter and see what happens. This is a, an HDR app. You're supposed to hold the camera still. So I'm like, eh, 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 right, to uh, see what I can do. Um, if I get completely bored, I'll use the silliest app on the planet, Marble Cam. This is what it does to everybody. Do not use it on a portrait, all right? <laughs> but, you know, especially in New York City with the architecture, you can just have fun with it. There are low resolution, so thankfully I'm not tempted to print them, all right? And I love even the idea of compositing on the phone, all right? So the experimentation is great, and it's letting me also experiment with things like GIF animation. So I have the sneezing lamp, okay? People are like, wow, you really got that. <laughs> okay, and it's an app, and I just positioned the snow so the lamp would sneeze. All right, um, here's another GIF animation. All right, so you've got the snowy tree and the birds. Sadly now, this app, in case anybody's out there listening, they do um, watermark all the animations, which is good for them, but it's one reason I've stopped using the app. Okay, because my name is not Loomer. <laughs> all right. Um, using the iPhone, I love the experimentation of slow motion. Wow, I'll turn the sound off. All right, so this is the classic, the Jay Mizell or the Ira Block, find an interesting background and wait. Okay, so this goes on forever. I am completely enamored with slow motion, probably because it makes me feel so productive. Okay. Um, more slow motion. Just watch that area down on the bottom. OK, I have no idea what I'm going to do with this stuff, but I can literally entertain myself endlessly <laughs> with, a, with a camera, with a phone. It's like you're at the airport, the flight's delayed. Great! 
because I see that as a challenge, okay? Besides, yelling at the people won't help you, so I just keep going. Um, don't I won't make you watch the whole thing. That is Lake Huron, not the ocean. So when things are moving quickly, I like to slow them down with slow motion, and when things are moving slowly, I will speed them up with time lapse, all right? And so, yeah, you'll see the, the buildings sort of light up as the sun's going down over New Jersey. And um, I wish the ferry was really that fast when I needed to get to New York in the morning, all right? But, and it's not dust, those are seagulls. Just sort of, uh, we're trying to figure out what's going on. So, actually it was time lapse that got me one of the reasons I started with photography. So remember back in the early 60s when the science teacher would show you those flowers waking up? That was it, I was hooked. I wanted to study biology because of those time lapses. Um, here, um, I've gone to Cuba three times. And um, so this is a time lapse of a ca cab ride. Now that I've made everybody nauseous, <laughs> all right? Um, but I mean, the color's great, the, whoops, okay. So it's, it's really special. Now, one of the other uh, great strengths of these, this smaller camera, of the phone, is not just what I can capture, but what I can um, be inspired by, all right? That ability to make the connection through uh, Instagram. I'm constantly on Instagram. If I commute, if I'm in the bus, if I'm waiting online, I will you know, go see what other people are doing and it's made me a better photographer, all right? If I see someone's framing something in an interesting way, it happened like two weeks ago. You know that in, in Dumbo, there's that one shot of the Manhattan Bridge um, with all the cobblestones and like every wedding photographer goes there and I'm like, I will not photograph it, I will not photograph it. Someone got down really low and there was like a manhole cover and, and I was like, damn. So then I started crawling around on the ground. Um, but it just showed me that I don't have to show the world from, you know, my height. It was just really smart, and I got that off of Instagram, all right? So I think it's important where we get this inspiration. Now, some people, oh, I have to end with a pickle, right? Some people think that the smartphones also have a lot of weaknesses. I call them characteristics, okay? Because you can't fight it, right? I mean, if you're going to complain about it, why bother? So embrace the characteristics and then hope for a new model, all right? <laughs> so one of them is people always complain about the low light and the limited dynamic range. In all honesty, that is changing. Um, so if I'm walking up Sixth Avenue and I see this, I'm not gonna go, oh, this picture's no good. No, I'm gonna photograph it and then use apps to actually enhance it even more. There's no fighting that the iPhone is terrible in low light, right? But I love this image. And I'm always asked, like, you know, is this what you saw? I see the image processed already while I'm taking it. So I was completely fine with it. Um, another limitation, so here's another example. I only had an iPhone with me, and I did an HDR shot of this view, and it's like my most popular picture on Instagram. I'm like, that is so sad. <laughs> right, but, but I get, you know, the graphics and the water tower and, you know, One World Trade Center, and it's also romantic, but fine. Um, so people complain with the iPhone, oh, you can't shoot fast action. Well, you know, I most, okay, you probably wouldn't want to, like, shoot car, car races with the iPhone, but run with it, literally. I never use that term here, all right? So if it's raining in New York, I will find you because I love following people when it's raining, especially coming up like 6th or 7th Avenue. I, I know there's a Bank of America coming up. It's going to be red light. Chase, blue light. Dwayne Reed. I know all the colors of the stores. It's so sad. And then I will uh, use Slow Shutter on the phone, which is a, um, an app that you can actually control the shutter speed. And I'll literally pan with the people. So people start wondering. They're like, that woman's running ahead of us again. Yeah, and I'm like, but it's New York, you know, they're like, oh, whatever. She's, she seems harmless, you know, I'm entertaining myself in the rain. And then these images, I'm enhancing them with a uh, Snapseed, okay? So another uh, 
characteristic of the iPhone that people like complain about is it's a fixed focal length, right? It's approximately 28 millimeter lens here. And it's like, okay, now you can add um, add-on lenses. A really great company right now, the really good lenses are the moment lenses, like spelled like the word moment. Um, but I'm like, okay, I'll just think more graphically. And the beauty of that 28 millimeter lens and this sensor is the um, amount of depth of field and how easy it is to focus, which I just think is great. So I'm very careful when I'm cooking that I will photograph it before I eat it, okay? And just, I literally walk to work and I'm constantly saying, find a picture, find a picture, look, find a picture. And even if I'm always walking the same streets, I can find something. I am trying to think more graphically with the phone. And, um, you know, you've got that, the lines, those ropes leading you in, then your eye takes a left, and it ends up at Agnes the fairy boat, boat, which is obviously some children's story waiting to be told. So again, that line's leading you in. So I'm thinking very graphically whenever I'm using the phone. Now, there are some uh, weaknesses to the phone. And one thing, the phone straight out of like the Apple box is incredibly hard to hold. Right? That is proven by all those terrible vertical videos you see. It's like, stop it. Um, so I have an add-on case. Here's like the moment case. Looks makes it look more like a camera. I think that's worth it. If I'm walking around with a thousand dollar computer, I'm gonna have a little grip on it. Okay. Um, yeah, really, what viewfinder? Okay, so that's that's a, a drawback, but I'm gonna show you some innovation on that. Now, here's something interesting that I I sort of made up on my own last week. Um, these small cameras, the phones, the other cameras I'm going to talk about in a moment, that's really where the innovation is taking place. So let's take a look at some of the camera manufacturers that are really on the forefront. And the first one being the action cams. <laughs> with the, Works every time. Now, I didn't just put this slide in here. I probably should have used a cat. That would have been impossible. The good thing about GoPros, and this is really interesting, if you look at GoPros, is, OK, they're a great little camera. You know what makes GoPro really, really special? Is they have an adapter to attach that camera to anything. Helmets, harnesses, doctors, horses, dogs, sharks. I mean, it's amazing what you can attach this camera to. And that's what makes the GoPro so great. You know, the guy that jumped off that Red Bull satellite? That's crazy. So that is so cool, right? The other thing about these smaller cameras, so this, this, imp, this ecosystem of being attached to anything is really the innovation, OK? Um, the other innovation, like with the GoPros, with the iPhones, we do time lapse, it's changed how we are taking pictures. It's really become a set it and forget it um, concept that you set the time lapse up, you attach that thing to like whatever you can, and then the photographer it becomes the editor, and then you will go and interact again with the images and the footage afterwards. So those are the two things I think are really interesting. I'm blinded by light. Is that interesting? OK, I guess I was more interested. All right, so we've got the phantoms, um, the drones. And once it, what's beautiful about these is they're letting us go places that, of course, we couldn't go. And yes, I do have permission to show all this footage and these images. I asked every photographer. OK? I love how he looks so tiny. This is a Colin Smith from Photoshop Cafe. He, he literally says he has to go fly every day. That's what he calls it. I'm going to go fly. And he does. I love this over these old helicopter bodies. And this is what it looks like to be a drone. And that's him up the top at 12 o'clock. And that's, I think that's really exciting. Now, to keep going with these small um, innovators, we have uh, DxO, which some of you might know as a, a software company. But they actually make a camera, OK? And the camera's on the left. So there's the phone in relationship on the right to it. And the phone is the viewfinder, is the monitor. Which makes sense, because we know the quality of these iPhone monitors are stupendous. 
right? So the camera is literally, if anybody can remember this, about the size of half a pack of cigarettes, all right? And so, but you can photograph without the camera hooked up to anything. So it's not quite spy camera, but it really, really high quality images. And here's some uh, pictures from Japan uh, taken with that DxO camera. These are my husband's. Don't go on a bus with him. He will photograph the back of your head. <laughs> it's this whole series he's doing. But it's just really beautiful. And what he loves about it is it just fits in his hand, so he'll just be like taking pictures and high quality 20 megabytes. So it's really, really great. So you can see he's doing more artistic work with it. But it's so smart. Why weigh the camera down with a monitor that's going to suck the battery when everybody has the monitor with them anyway? OK? Now, further innovation are these, uh, the Theta S, which is um, literally about the size of this remote. OK? And you'll notice, if you look at that center image, it has two lenses that shoot at 180 degrees. And you can do stills. So let me show you that. There's my husband on the right-hand side. OK? Here he is surrounded by adoring women. <laughs> I'm like, you showed me this picture? No. Um, I, I'm waiting for Theta to make like a black glove so that you don't see your hand. So the stills are fun, but the video is cool. So I'm going to show you some video um, done by a student of mine for his thesis project. And so here is the video straight off the Theta. So you can see the two 180 views. Yes, he's skateboarding through Havana. All right, so a little disorienting, right? And here it is flattened out. Isn't that great? <laughs> so he's a little nuts. So he's working on his thesis project. I'm going to show part of it. It's, it's uh, still in rough cut that this is how you could do VR. So you could put it online. You could look at it through a player, use that Google Cardboard, and then see it in VR and hear it in 360 sound. So his thesis project is, oh my god, nobody's going to trust anybody anymore. My husband's taking little pictures like this. Um, what Boise's doing is he's capturing the, over, the comments that you hear on the street that you overhear. And he's doing a video about it. So you know how it is in New York. Sometimes you hear these conversations that you don't want to hear. I mean, for me, as soon as it gets to bodily fluids, I'm like, I am out of here. <laughs> but so I'll show you a little bit of his thesis project. Now, this was meant to look, be seen on a viewer, but I actually like the way it looks uh, flat. I'm worried about leaving my mark on the world. Wonder if anyone else feels that. That's not an original thought. We all have things we love. We should share more. With each other. That's right, sweetheart. We have millions of neighbors. All around us. But no extended sense of neighborhood. Despite our... Shared fears and our similarities. For sure, dude. Like things everyone can relate to. Sometimes we litter. I laugh. I worry. Oh, oh really? That's the Is she still a bitch? Ever. Because I heard she was. You should write TV commercials. <laughs> of the land the whole world dreams about. That give this city energy. I was up all night. Listening to the neighbors. We've got stories. All with their own unique lives and costumes. Living side by side. People are amazing. The weird things we carry. And the secret dreams we hold. I scrimp and save. 
then spend sixty dollars on a night out with my homies. Eating peanut butter sand. So it keeps going like that. Um, hey, you see, we're still having a conversation. Does the mechanical voice work or not? But he's going to figure that out. But I just love how New York unbends and folds, and he's skateboarding through. I'm always like, say, don't tell him you go to SVA. I don't, I don't want that phone call. So um, I think that's really, really exciting about how these, the, the innovation of these small cameras. All right. It has to do, of course, that the, the smaller sensors are so great that computerization is letting us have these small cameras, but also taking a look at what like, creative people and what artists are doing with them. All right. It's, I'm, I'm excited about it. Now, if we uh, move up to the more medium cameras, I would say that would be like the, the Sony RX100, which I have here, which I have with me all the time, the 6300. Um, is they really address some of the weaknesses of the, those smaller cameras, okay? Which, of course, we can shoot raw, we shoot higher quality, of course there's better lenses, um, you know, more storage, and you can shoot faster. And they still are small enough to carry with me every day. I should, I really abuse my equipment. I should probably like clean my iPhone lens about once a month. Um, so the thing is, is it, the ability to carry it with me every day is, you know, if it's raining, I'm taking it. If I'm going hiking, I'm taking it. All right, it's small enough to fit into my uh, a pocket. All right, because it's like 20 megapixels of raw information, I can you know make beautiful prints off of it. Now here's um, a, some images I've shown previously with the what's the advantage of that small Sony. So I had the uh, good fortune, fortune to be in Zimbabwe for about two weeks in August. And we went places that a lot of uh, like tourists don't go. So here's like the back market of a market where these gentlemen are building these um, marimbas. Okay? And first of all, you can see I'm literally over the man's shoulder. Okay? But I'm only shooting with this little camera. So it's not like I'm walking into this market with like, oh, look at my $5,000 worth of equipment. I'm walking in with a point and shoot that's shooting raw. So I'm shooting really, really quickly. And it, the, it, the conditions aren't all that great. Everything's dusty and dirty. These people are making these like uh, little stone sculptures. And here you could see like they're protecting themselves from the dust with a towel. It's like, oh my goodness. But because I had this little camera, I didn't have that big piece of metal in front of me. I mean, I'm talking about the big, like a big 35 millimeter uh, camera. So there was a different relationship between me and the people, you know. I mean, I love doing like portraits and things, and I'll use a longer lens, but I'm not about to start shouting at people. And so it let me really, the little camera really let me connect and also get very dusty, okay? So you see how small that camera is? You don't even, you probably don't even see it in my hands. I mean, obviously I'm taking pictures, but I think that's a real advantage of these uh, small cameras. The other advantage is, like I said, I have it with me all the time, which is literally the truth. Last Wednesday, just a, a total digression, I had this camera with me. I took 600 pictures with one battery. When I came home and I downloaded, I'm like, damn. I mean, that's like, I shot 580 at work, and I did like over 20 more on the walk home. I do overshoot, admittedly. But I was like, one battery, 600 pictures? Whew. So if I see the lights good, I'm taking the long way home. Okay? And I don't stand there and go, oh, I wish I had the XX camera. Oh, I should have brought my tripod, which I own a number of, but they always seem to end up in storage. Um, you know, it's like the light's good, just do it. So here's a good example. This is, obviously, this is a flat iron building. Who am I telling that to? Um, I'm walking home and I see a bunch of photographers. They got the tripods out, they're looking up, they're going to shoot the flat iron. I'm like, oh, I can do that. But, of course, I did not have a tripod, but I did find a garbage can, okay? And so, or to be politically correct, I found a recycling bin, okay? And I set up, I took this picture, I'm like, yeah, whatever. I get home at night and I start processing it. And it's like, those are stars. And I was just so impressed with this little camera that first I thought, oh my God, my sensor's dirty. And I'm like, no, sensor dust is not white. And then I realized that I'd actually photographed stars with a little point and shoot, which I thought was great. 
So you don't have to go to the desert. <laughs> yes. Just, I just saved you a, a long trip. OK? Um, so oh, I've got to, we'll get to that. Now, let's keep going with those medium specialized cameras. They're pretty amazing. Now there's like little sports camera made by um, Olympus that you know you can take underwater. They're crush proof, freeze proof, or like what I do, give them to my brother who's totally horrible with equipment because he's into triathlons and he's going to ruin it. He still hasn't figured out how to turn off the date, which does irritate me. Okay. The other ones that are really interesting are like you might have heard like the Fuji, Fuji Intax cameras that make little prints. Um, Polaroid has a new camera, or this one is so cool. Have you guys heard of this? I support it on Kickstarter. I keep waiting for it. The Light L16. Check this puppy out. 16 lenses. I know, I know. It's like, well, you know, Ira was talking about photographing at like 50,000 ISO, or as I like to say, you don't have to take the lens cap off. This is, this is going to be so amazing, you know? We've all taken pictures of the inside of our camera bag. So check out what this looks like inside. Each one is like a separate sensor and lens and processor. Can't wait to get it. I'm saying that because this will be streamed. <laughs> OK. So what are the advantages of the larger cameras? And I'm talking about the, the DSLRs, the A7Rs, you know, Nikons, the Canons, the Sonys. So what's the first big advantage of it? interchangeable lenses, OK, that you can really have the specialized lenses. I mean, if you want a tilt shift lens, very hard to put it on this camera, OK? And I've done the comparison. Using Photoshop to straighten a building is not the same as using your, per, your tilt shift lens, OK? Obviously, the resolution allows me uh, larger files for larger prints, all right? And that's really, for me, the big, big advantage. So here's the full frame. This is off the uh, A7R2, and now at 100. I love the little pigeon things. I never saw those. I've walked by this so many times. I didn't know that there were those pigeon prongs to roast pigeons with. OK? <laughs> I mean, and if you look at it, those wire things, that's like one pixel wide. I mean, I think that's amazing. OK? So Central Park. And it, this, this kid needs a tissue. <laughs> OK? But I love how, we, how enamored he is with that uh, sax player. And uh, one more. One of my uh, muses, JP. I zoom in on him quite often. All right? So what I'm actually seeing, when I zoom in like this, all I'm seeing is retouching. OK? But I mean, that's the big advantage of these larger cameras. All right. Another advantage of the larger cameras, especially compared to um, the phone, is the ability to shoot very, very quickly. Okay, because of, of course there's more processors in the in the camera. I do drown a lot of rocks. They keep saying Lake Huron is rising. I'm going, I know, because I keep putting more rocks into it. So check this out. This is from that six, the 6300, A6300. The focus on this thing is ridiculously fast. I mean, I have more pictures of seagulls. The seagull doesn't get any prettier. But he's in focus on every single shot. I want that fo the focus for the 6300 to get put into the A7Rs. I mean, it's so good. Uh, Dennis Bielia, he photographs all of the uh, air shows. And that this is the camera you use because the focus is so fast. Because those planes are going really quickly. I mean, I'm, I'm just stunned. So it's great. So another good advantage of the, um, the larger cameras, the sensors, is the absolutely fabulous low light performance. Ira showed that really light well, that he's lighting things with uh, candlelight. OK, just walking out of having dinner in Cuba, only had the point and shoot with me. Little point and shoot, 5,000 ISO. The beautiful file. And I, I wanted to catch that mood. OK? I find it easier to work with strobes when I'm working with the larger cameras, like the A7R2, OK? Just in terms of that it's a little more traditional. So that makes it a lot easier to work with strobes. And finally, the most important reason is um, it makes you look like a pro. 
Um, well, I'll edit out that white wine. Um, I'm only kidding. You know, there's great advertising campaigns being done with phones and smaller cameras. But make sure to put that lens shade on because it makes your lens bigger. <laughs> OK? So what are some of the drawbacks of these larger cameras? Well, the, the one for me and the one reason I started with Sony was, damn, they're heavy. OK? I mean, don't raise your hand. Does anybody have like a, Nike, a certain camera 810? It's sort of like, remember in, the, remember in the film days, Mamiya, the RZ Mamiya's? Shake your head, because you've been to the chiropractor, right? <laughs> oh my god, I used to think I could kill a cow with that camera. And the camera would be fine, all right? So heavy. Oh my god, I'll never be asked to speak again. But it's the truth. It's, it's too heavy. And the reason I know it's too heavy is because my photographs, they kept getting closer and closer to the car until I was photographing the car. Right? Oh, that's it. It's over. <laughs> that's right. Just pull the plug. Um, another thing I think with a lot of these large cameras is they can be intimidating, not just to the photographer, but to the people you're photographing. So two years ago was the first time I was going to go to Cuba. I was not going to show up with that wall of metal you know, that said large manufacturer on it you know, with these big giant lenses. It was like, how, a, how rude is that? You know, oh, let me come and everything's exotic and different. I'm going to take your picture and put this thing in front of me and between you and me. I wanted that smaller camera. So that's when I actually started shooting the Sony A7R. And I went to B&H and I literally said, give me the brightest pink strap you have. And I know people were like, no one's ever ordered a strap like that. Because I wanted to look like a tourist. Okay? And it worked because people were at ease. I'm willing to make a fool of myself. Doesn't matter. All right? Another thing I think there's a drawback of the large cameras is there's commitment issues, right? My father used this lens in the 50s. And I'm like, oh, great. Yes, it will still most likely work on that 35 millimeter camera, but is it going to give you the best results, right? Or are the newer lenses with the better coating and the electronics going to give you better results with these newer cameras? But we all have those commitment issues, right? OK. So what do I do? I want the best of both worlds. I want the quality of these larger cameras, the sensors, the lenses, the ability to change lenses, be able to shoot quickly. But I want the fun and the spontaneity of a phone. OK? So this is what I do. I want the best of both worlds. And the best of both worlds mean shoot with these good cameras and then transfer it to your phone for processing and sharing. So here I am uh, shooting the sunrise. You can see that. I'm, I have to point out one little thing. I'm not allowed to leave the podium. But I, whoop. Oh, that was not pleasant. Excuse me. I broke it. OK, good. I'm not going to use that clicker thing. OK, um, if you look just to the right of the lens, my tripod was a rock. Because once again, the tripod was away. But here you see the actual shot with the sensor dust, right? And then this is what I shared. So it still has the same, the same feeling. But shoot with a better camera. With the Sonys and a number of other cameras now, you can transfer wirelessly. Ira mentioned that in his talk this morning. While he was mentioning, I was shooting him and transferring it, and it was up on Twitter and Facebook before he was done with his talk. OK? So here's uh, Victoria Falls. And it was like, oh, this is nice. But I was already seeing this is reminding more of a Japanese landscape. And so I decided to uh, go to Japan instead. All right, so shot with a better camera, transfer to the phone. All right? I'm, I'm of the, the mind that it's all fair. Um, you know, I've never met a pixel I didn't want to change. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.